Why is there no other game like Skyrim? That's a good question. This game was re-released three times. It has three expansions and the modding community is even today still super busy releasing some really cool mods and stuff. Like it's crazy what you can do in Skyrim. So yeah, today we are going to find out what makes Skyrim so unique. Oh yeah, that wagon part. We've all been there. <laughs> Skyrim is... You know what Skyrim is. If there's one game that needs no introduction, it's The Elder Scrolls V. The game's been relevant for almost a decade now, so there's True. plenty, maybe even dare I say too many, in-depth reviews, video essays, and two-hour analysis videos <laughs> by British dudes that use the word <laughs> fundamental a lot. Yes, a lot of the points people make nowadays are stuff we've all heard before, regurgitated That's actually over true. and over again, but now it's been a year more since the last time we heard it. But even so, the sheer volume of content created around this game the oh, number yeah. of careers birthed around Skyrim content. that is actually so true I mean just look at uh, camel works for example or, or yeah Fatshima up it too uh, like camel works like sometimes he will make like videos just about like one zone with like strange curiosities and stuff like that or secrets it's like one or two hours long and he has like many like maybe even hundreds of such videos <laughs> like it is insane and like yeah when it comes like views like even if you look now here like some stuff that was like made th even three months ago from from now and stuff like it's still going crazy still getting views and like skyrim even though there's like elder scrolls online now well you could say it's like the next chapter of the elder scrolls franchise right like it's still relevant even though there's like a new game already out right and like people, they want us Elder Scrolls 6 finally. And they're giving us hints that maybe this is going to be in High Isle and stuff. But we will see what the next big uh, Elder Scrolls game is. Like they've not even started developing it yet. But maybe we have hopes for like 5-6 years from now, right? Much there is to say about I it. Hope Love so, it or hate it or pretend to hate it because everyone loves it. It's silly to not recognize at least the qualities that make it one of the most influential RPG games ever made. That is so true. Definitely the most recognizable RPG title of the past decade. And a lot of people online seem to have a problem admitting this for some reason. Like whenever you mention the game in a positive way, someone's always ready to jump at you from the bushes to That's tell normal. you how inferior you can't your please taste everyone. is. It's almost like they're mad that others enjoy something strange. But you gotta remember who makes up a <laughs> yeah, majority so of Skyrim's place. 30 plus million sales. It's not gamers arguing on forums about how Morrowind had better RPG mechanics, it's people like you and me who just play things they enjoy. Unless you're one of those people, in which case... Shoo. So today Shoo. I thought it's high time I add my little drop to the ocean of Skyrim videos because my opinion matters. I don't think the world needs another the adjective noun of Skyrim so today I want to do something different and talk about why no one's been able to replicate Skyrim's appeal in the past 10 years. Now this should go without saying but pretty much nothing goes without saying on the internet so I'm gonna say it anyway. What I'm talking about here is the charm of Skyrim. It's what makes the game so appealing to so many people. I'm not saying it's the best game. I'm not saying it's the best RPG. I'm not saying whatever it takes to not say to avoid comments like, Ugh. But that is actually true. Like when he talks about like the exploration, the environment and stuff. Like this was also was what like really got me into Skyrim. So I made my first character back then and I left finally the wagon to just get freaking attacked by a dragon and such and such. And then I suddenly get out of some, some random cave and there's like this, this mountain area with like forests and stuff. I get to like river wood and I'm like... Oh, this looks so beautiful and wait, what's that? Is there like some sort of waterfall? There's like a, a bandit cave uh, next to it and stuff. I was like really, really impressed by like the whole exploration feeling and everything. And this is what made me actually play even more. And then I got like uh, super addicted at some point. Like the whole environment and that it kind of looks like where I live because I'm from Germany and there are like some areas sometimes I walk in Skyrim I'm like hey this could be an area like uh, at my forest somewhere here <laughs> and, like there are some mods that make even stuff look more realistic like I was messing up with some mods and you know what's like cool about like Skyrim it's kind of like a sandbox game even though it isn't because you have like random encounters 
So each playthrough, there's like different NPCs. Sometimes you get attacked by some sort of vampire lord. Sometimes it's just a wolf. Sometimes it's a bandit. Sometimes you go to a cave and there are different mobs uh, than in another playthrough. And we have like so many mods that we constantly get that this is almost like a sandbox game because it's like there are still being parts added over time to the game. And it's, it's not even like an MMO because like MMOs do that right where they make like new patches you get like new dungeons new things but no we get this through a lot of mods and to through re-releases like the anniversary edition for example there were some mods that became base game basically right so it felt even to me like the latest release of, of Skyrim like this was a new expansion even though it wasn't I'm not saying it's the best RPG. I think it's really good. I'm not saying whatever it takes to not say to avoid comments like, um, actually. This is all my opinion, and it's okay if you disagree with me. So let's just jump into it. They put us off here and left without us. He died a few days later. Wait, what? I've probably clocked in more hours in Skyrim over the years than any other single player game. Yeah, same here. Why? I'm not a fan of medieval themed anything. In fact, I always thought it was a boring, overused aesthetic. I've never been a big <laughs> fan of RPG Man, titles you that either. Way. Now I am, but when I first got obsessed with Skyrim, it was pretty much the only RPG game that managed to grab my attention. To me, these things show that there's something else to this game beyond the standard description of medieval fantasy action RPG that drew me to it. A really fun fact about me is I was a broke bitch growing up. I got into gaming at a young age, but over time I couldn't keep up with the specs necessary to play new stuff oh, so I had a period of around a good decade where I could pretty much just stand on the sidelines watching other people play all these <sighs> games on YouTube and curse I've hated when I was younger like my parents wouldn't get me like a new uh, PC for gaming for some time and I had to constantly annoy my neighbor and come to him and be like hey can I use your computer can I play some games there <laughs> like this was me when I was like well, how old was I like 13 14 years old and I didn't have like like a good computer I had to like beg my parents for months to get me a new computer it was like 13 14 so I would go to like my freaking neighbor and annoy him hey let me use your computer <laughs> oh I remember seeing God himself for not giving me a gaming PC during this time a lot of great shit came out some games I was already a huge fan of like Assassin's oh, Creed yeah that's others good, were brand I had new fun. exciting IPs and of course Skyrim was somewhere in that mix <laughs> I kept a nice little neat list of games I'm gonna play if the universe ever blesses me with a computer. So by the time I became an actual self-sustaining adult and saved up enough money to buy one, guess what? Come on, guess! I didn't you got care about Skyrim, any right? of those games anymore. Except one. The first game I installed on my brand spanking new RGB boosted Falcon mm -hmm. Scorpio Mega Thunder Crusher PC was of course... Up by Academy Big Bouncy Booby ah. Babes. But this is a video about Skyrim, so... My fondest okay. memory of this game came before I could ever even play it. I was at a friend's place and I was watching him play, and I remember the moment he came across a giant in a random field. Just spontaneously running across something so insane in an otherwise ordinary looking world felt yeah. so surreal and fascinating to me. He Same wasn't when there as attack. a prop for me to find, he was just minding his giant business, just doing... Whatever the fuck giants do, dragging his giant balls across the land. Over the years that I was unable to run games, I've seen lots of epic gamer moments, but this was the one that stuck with me. Years later, when I bought my PC, the fascination was still- Wait, wait, why, why was it so stuck with you with the giant? Because he freaking uh, punched you to the sky or something like that? Like, it actually happened to me. Like, I didn't know, like, how much damage that thing does, like, this giant. So I, <laughs> on my first playthrough, <laughs> approached the giant, used his big club he freaking smashed me with it and i ended up flying to the sky i could like literally almost touch the stars <laughs> like seriously <laughs> I, I was like flying around for ages until i freaking came down to the ground <laughs> then i reloaded and i didn't cross this path again like i went the other way to get to my quest objective <laughs> like i didn't want to get thrown to the sky again like freaking punch to like the stars like space or something <laughs> This was my experience with Giants. How was your Giants experience? Let me know in the comment section. If you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. Yo, this this like video right now that we are reacting to, yo, this brings back epic memories, guys. I, I'm feeling so nostalgic today. Like, there's so much nostalgia going on in my mind now.
people there. I had no problem getting lost in this world that would be considered ancient by this point. I had no problem shitting my pants the first time I came across the inconspicuous Dark Brotherhood door oh. randomly without knowing what it was. Yeah. Is there like also some different music if you're nearby, I think? Unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, like what the heck is this? Is that some, some necromancer club or something? You know how when a shitty mobile game advertisement says, take command of a legendary hero to fight epic monsters and save the epic galaxy, yes. not a single one of those words gets you excited? Skyrim doesn't need to tell you what an epic journey you'll embark on. Yeah, you it's just see it for yourself once you start. It's one of the games that manages to make you feel it. And how it does that is, I guess, the key to finding out why no one else has done it. Now, there's obviously some incredible games that have come out since that many, including myself, would say are better than The Elder Scrolls V. There's also a ton of games directly inspired by Todd Howard's crowning achievement. But in this video, I'm specifically focusing on things that made Skyrim such a long-lasting, industry-defining phenomenon which very very few other games manage to become so to get this out of the way first it's not fucking mods i think mods get way way too much credit for the success of Skyrim. They absolutely help with the longevity and Bethesda has great mod support with the creation kit but lots of other games have mods and they ain't shit. Throw mods onto okay, a pile of true. garbage that no one wants to play and it becomes a pile of garbage that no one wants to play but you can now not play as Uganda Knuckles. If you look at Okay, so so what he's like trying to point out is like yeah, that is true like there are many games that have mods and the mods they don't help the game to stay alive. And I guess because like not only do you have like out of randomness in the base game already with Skyrim But if you add like mods on top of randomness you get even more randomness, right? So if you play Skyrim like a, a million times even like each time is still going to be at some point somehow different, right? Because the mods will affect not just the environment, but also like the NPCs and stuff So I guess because like the base idea of the game and the base world how it looks like that with the cities the law and everything is such a established like a well-established base that if you put something on top mod wise that it still is very interesting but even more interesting because now you have on top of something interesting something undiscovered new interesting right basically Okay, uh, yeah, 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 that's actually true I would say that too because yeah from all those games I've played and mods I tried Skyrim is like pulling me more into this world and I feel like more immersion and stuff and I want to play it again garbage yeah. that no one wants to play and it becomes a pile of garbage that no one wants to play but you can now not play as Uganda Knuckles if you look at the casual community mods are just cumbersome I didn't even think to install mods on my first then playthrough, you content and a lot of people if you I know are the same. Yes, this is all just my own experience, but what I'm trying to say is, even if you do play with mods that don't completely overhaul certain mechanics, I don't think the reason you're playing is because of the mods. There wouldn't be so much effort put into developing them, often for no monetary gain, if the game itself wasn't already pretty cool. I think attributing yeah. Skyrim's success to mods is just taking away from the core of the game that allows for the mods to be fun. And yes, I know Bethesda sucks now and it's easy to dismiss their achievements, but I want to give them credit where it's oh, due. Oh, those creps. Yo, this, this reminds so what me. what is it that makes Yo, this reminds me of something. I want to say this. This was also on my first playthrough. So not only was there somewhere a giant, I think it was like this spot, right? It was near to Whiterun. Yeah, that's where I got like uh, thrown to, this, to space like with a club. Like this uh, giant smashed me. But before this happened, so I was walking there and there was like this little lake thing here. This is close to White Run. And, and suddenly like crabs were chasing me on my first playthrough. I was like, what the heck's happening? I'm like walking through some plains field there. And then suddenly like freaking crabs chased me. Oh, this happened to me too. <laughs> I think that's also like one of the reasons why people get like so interested in Skyrim because you do something and then like random random shit just happens. Taking away from the core of the game. I like this kind of randomness. To be fun. That's and why I yes, like Minecraft I too. It's so now, random. It's easy to dismiss their achievements, but I want to give them credit where it's due. 
Like, it's always so not what is it that makes up that core? Honestly, you know my ADD ass can't keep up with most stories in games, so I can definitely confirm that it's not the story. I think one thing that stands out whenever you ask someone why they love Skyrim is the atmosphere. I usually spend whole also, videos on atmosphere, go watch those by the way, but this time I'm gonna try to keep it brief. Visuals, music, and exploration. These are things that give Skyrim its distinct soul. Cities feel familiar and cozy. Nature feels vast and mysterious. Making a world look good is one thing, making it feel good is a much more difficult task. The world of Skyrim is not only pretty, it's also composed beautifully. Forcing your poor deadbeat horse up the side of a mountain is rewarding not only for this something that you'll inevitably find there, oh. but because of the grand majestic scenery you'll be put in the center of. This is all aided beautifully by the iconic soundtrack composed by Jeremy Soule. Not much to say about that, you don't really want to listen to me describe music, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. When that ooh shit kicks in, you know you feel it in your bones. This makes <laughs> True. exploration feel serene and calming, makes you want to spend time in that world. And the best way of exploring the world is to just wander around aimlessly and get sidetracked whenever you set out to do a quest. This works because any direction you pick has something waiting for you. You're not even incentivized to explore purely by loot. It's the unique locations and experiences that are arguably more worth it. You don't Why? know what a random hut across the hill is hiding. You don't know what path a random conversation will take you on. Corny as it may sound, the memories you create by exploring stick around with you much longer than the cool sword you found. To be honest, I That's haven't true. played the game in a while and this senile old brain forgets most of the specifics, but the reason I even wanted to make this video were the vibes that still stick with me very vividly. I think your character not speaking also helps quite a lot with the immersion, which is something not a lot of people mention. Oh. I love feeling that quiet sense of loneliness and isolation isolation in games, and I think controlling a whole ass predetermined personality would have made that more difficult. So music, visuals, exploration, vibes, immersion, blah blah blah, none of this works in an inaccessible world. This mm -hmm. is where I think the secret to Skyrim's massive success lies. The balance between width and depth, one so optimally achieved that it allows for the largest potential audience to enjoy all of those fundamentals that make the game appealing. Make a game too deep and you risk alienating all but the most hardcore of players willing to put in the time and effort to learn the complex mechanics. Make it too wide and it's easy for its elements to lose weight and meaning yeah. because you simply can't put proper care into developing all of them. Of course, both of these are important and work with each other. But that is that is true. Like, okay, I give an example. If you have too many quests and they're like pointless, they're losing value, right? If you have too many mechanics, you're maybe attracting hardcore players, but you're like pushing the casual players away. Like, this is the same with the difficulty when it comes to gameplay. If, like, a game is too hardcore difficult, like, you're gonna feel a certain way after some time. If you're, like, a new player and you constantly keep dying. But if you make it too easy, it's also not good if you get into the game, right? So, I feel like when it comes to, like, game development and you look at every single aspect, it's the combat aspect with the mechanics, it's the story aspect with the quests and how many quests there are in the world, like, how big is the map, how is this, how is that... Like, you have to find a balance. Do you make a bigger map? Then you need to add more quests. But also, they can't be too short, right? But if you make the quest too long and the world too big, you're never going to finish the, the game, right? So, there are, like, so many factors and everything needs to be balanced. Like, I think, like, like if you look at the process when it comes to, like, game development, and we see this with, like, for example, now with Ashes of Creation, how long it takes, right? Like, so many years the game is still not done. Because if you if you plan on making a game, you need not only to have like a rough idea how long like you how much time you want to invest into the game, but you also need to have like a rough sketch at least of how your end product is going to look like. Is this a game where you have like four hundred quests with at least a little bit of a complex combat that is not too hard to make, and you want to finish this game in like three four years? Then go for it and stick to what you have planned. But yeah, like I feel like Skyrim comes like quests. We do have many quests, but not too many. So if you go to like a city, there are usually like what like four or five very memorable quests, and then you have like some side quests, right? 
And I think that's a good balance. And then you still have those random encounters and some NPCs like uh, you have at the Mages Guild, for example, this uh, Orc Librarian that gives you some random uh, find a book in a random cave kind of quest, right? It can be in, in any location. Like sometimes it's there, sometimes it's there. And I think that is cool because it, it adds some variety to one single quest because this certain item can appear in different locations or like where you have to get some, some book, right? So I think that's really cool. I think they did really well with that and they have a nice balance in Skyrim. Nothing is too complex, nothing is too easy. Quests are not too long, they are not too short either. So it's, it's like in the right middle. Other, but a general sentiment among gamers is that depth is a little more important than width. It's better to have a smaller game that does a few things but does them right, rather than a game that does a lot of things but isn't really super focused on any of them. And I generally also agree, true. I think. I mean, it sounds like that's how it should be. But then again, do I absolutely love coming home to a frankly shell of a human wife that only repeats the same few lines Hello, my love. and a daughter whose only purpose is to strip me of my belongings? You're back! Did you get me a present? Yeah. I could have added more there. Fuck yeah. Is yoga an essential part of GTA 5? No, of course not. Can you enjoy <laughs> the game without it? Absolutely. But, but it's does fun it that it's add there. a sort of validity to the world? I think it does. There were a lot of things to complain about in regards to the Cyberpunk 2077 disaster, but something I've seen mentioned more than you would think is the minor, non-essential stuff, like how not a single arcade game is playable. This goes to show that people, yeah. even if subconsciously, actually care a lot about things Why that can't could be I play considered this? just pointless this with, work. and that the number of things you can do also contributes to the world being fun, even if those things aren't too deep oh, in their own Brother way. Missions I think are the fun depth too. versus width discussion is not that simple, and one is not inherently better than the other. Imagine this as a scale, because unless you have infinite time and budget, you can't have both maxed out. Yeah, depth it needs gets to be in more the middle. credit because it can work better on its own. Like, you would rather eat a tiny serving of a Michelin star dish than a bunch of half-cooked ingredients. But True. I would say that they're both equally as important in giving the finished piece that crazy mass appeal. Remember when I told you to imagine a linear scale three seconds ago? Well, now forget that because it doesn't really work with this next thing I'm gonna say. How about pick a few core things to fully flesh out and develop and then spend the rest of your time and budget on expanding the scope with lots of fun surface level activities and mechanics. I think this- Th That's what Skyrim did because there's so many mini quests and mini missions with those super in-depth ones where there's like so much lore like you have sometimes some random encounters where for example can you help me can you give me some gold or you can uh, suddenly at some point also but you need to own a house adopt someone right like a kid and sometimes you can give them something i think they also can give you something if i'm not mistaken and you can get married in game like you have like so many smaller thingies and then you have like this really complex story of like the dragons are returning they are being raised from their uh, burials and uh, burial grounds and, and like now there's a threat you need to save the world and there's this uh, mages guild the mages guild had this story the city used to be bigger than something happened the water came the flood like half the city or more was even taken like there are like some areas with like so much lore and depth or like some cities or like if you look at like riften and the thieves guild and stuff that you are like, really getting dragged into like the story and lore and you immerse yourself very well but then you have like those side uh, thingies or if you join the dark brotherhood like hey uh, there's this one npc that needs to uh, be taken to Sithis, uh, freaking go there and kill this dude or something. Like, I, I love this actually. Like, some would say, oh, this is like a little short written, that's boring, it's just like a random quest. But I think that's cool actually, that really adds to the world in my opinion. This is better than trying to make every single thing present in the game worthwhile and in the process spreading yourself out too thin, yeah. resulting in nothing <coughs> really being worthwhile. People fucking love just having a useless dumb dog follow them around. I don't need to be able to interactively pet different parts of his body, have a selection of 500 voiced nicknames just the to he follows from, you, yeah. or a side mission where I built him a rocket and sent him to space. Just put dog in game and have dog follow me around and get in my way. And yeah, if joining the thieves 
Thieves Guild was a quintessential part of the story, I would have been disappointed that there's not much to do in it. But it's not. It's just one of the many, many options the game gives you. It's one of the many ways you can say you built your character to be. And the quests that get you there are completely different from the Dark Brotherhood quests or yes. the College of Winterhold quests. It's unique. So you can say that it's a unique experience, gameplay-wise, but especially role-playing-wise. Just the good. concept of being able to turn into a vampire or a werewolf is insane enough to be exciting in itself. It doesn't have to be deep, layered, and interconnected with everything else to leave a strong memory, something that you'll remember happening in the game years after you've done it. That being said, people underestimate Skyrim's depth. I've seen the game described as being wide as a lake That's and not deep true. as a pond. I don't know, wide as a wide body of water and deep as a shallow body of water. A lot over the years and I don't really think that's true. I mean, the core systems are pretty solid and they don't get enough credit. I want to avoid getting lost in the specifics because I'm trying to discuss the bigger picture and you've already heard most of the shit before, but the skill tree lets you see real tangible progress and gives you a yes. feeling that every perk point matters. Sure, a few skills and maybe even entire branches are either useless or could have been handled differently. Ah! And I I have no problem admitting this, but there's still plenty of substance there to enjoy and mess around with. To say that this many up- Like what I love about Skyrim when it comes to like the system with like the points here, like the cool thing is you can make like very unique builds. Like you can have a necromancer in heavy armor that's like uh, even holding a sword in one hand and you're raising the dead with another one. Or you can have some sort of sneaky mage where you are in light armor, you're like sneaking around, you have a dagger. But on one hand you have like something like illusion spells or you have like some damaging spells as well. And actually some mods that even make like mage sneaking more fun where you get like super extra damage when you fire spells when you're like sneaking and stuff. But yeah, if you look at even like the, the base game without mods... There's still many build options. You can go for like heavy armor, one hand weapon and spell. Maybe even like necromancy or conjuration. So you're like a conjuration warrior. Um, you can be a freaking sneaky thief, but you can still use some spells. Focus on maybe something like illusion or something, right? Like I think this is really cool because you have like so many different uh, varieties of one build. And you can have like some kind of secondary like, uh, this is not like a class, but let's just call it a class, but like a, or let's just call it specialization. You can have a secondary specialization in some school. You can be like a master archer while still being a knight in heavy armor. You can be a mage while being a warrior and stuff. I really like that, how you can mix those things to create some unique builds. And there's like one uh, channel that goes by the name Fudge Muppet. And they make sometimes very fascinating builds with that, where they have... Like even some builds where there's like a lot of speechcraft in and you're like, wait, for what do you need speechcraft? And then they add like a lot of points into illusion. And then you can play as, 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 as a build that barely fights and you just get all the content done with a little fighting. <laughs> like it's interesting. There are such builds. Grades, none of which are that incremental. All your fucking silver daggers under four inches that begin with the letter D deal 0.02% more damage now, have no depth to them, is simply bullshit. You can certainly box yourself into a playstyle and have a hard time switching down the road, but I mean, that's, that just sounds appropriate. A master archer can't become a two-handed expert overnight. Just boot up a new save and shape your character differently. There's also yeah. a fuck ton of armor and weapons to collect, and they all have more than enough variety oh, with yeah. all the possible enchantments. Ones. And the designs are some of the best I've ever seen in games. They look like, nice. seriously, how does Skyrim still get me excited to flex that ebony drip? How does it still manage to look epic after Looks so cool. many years? How does this look better than those 10 times more pimped out armors from like Chinese MMOs. Ha, <laughs> true. <sighs> okay, I've been dreading this moment, but should we talk about combat? All right, I'm gonna talk about combat a little bit. All right, let's talk about it. Okay, straight up, shit literally feels like when you're trying to fight in a dream. Even though I personally, yeah. by some miracle, enjoyed it, I still think it sucks balls. However, really? I don't think it's all bad. Yeah, you get almost zero feedback and you look like you're fighting air during I the actual process wrong with it. of combat but there's still quite decent variety to how you can approach it. It is possible to have different builds depending on how you want to play. You can be a stealth archer or- Oh, this is fun. Yeah, you'll just be a stealth archer. 
but there's also one-handed, two-handed, light armor, heavy armor, block. Has anyone actually ever used block? Block. You know what I always suggest for like people that don't know what the heck they want to specialize in? Try to mix one-handed weapon with spells. Like this is one of my absolute most favorite playstyles in Skyrim. And let me tell you why. So if you have like a one-handed weapon, you get melee experience. But if you're holding one spell in one hand, you can try to conjure stuff while you're fighting in melee against something that that conjure thingy it's going to help you you can even throw like freaking fireballs at your targets while you approach them and when you are in melee range they are already in half their half or below and you have like an easier time and it's really cool because it, get, it doesn't get boring and you have like some variety while fighting because some people are saying if you just play melee it's boring because it's always the same animation so if you just throw like those fireballs constantly it gets boring so yeah like in skyrim you can hi you can be a hybrid you can be a half mage half warrior or half a sneaky archer but also have a little bit of melee skills right so it is there this option and i would always recommend for people that want to have a longer playthrough to go for that Unless that's not your thing. But for me, it's really fun. Block. Has anyone actually ever used block? Block is uncharted uh, I do territory. Actually, it's still not sometimes. quite clear what it does. Ah. Magic is an obviously inferior way to play, but it's not because magic is not deep enough. It's just not balanced well. Your magicka drains way too quick, and that naturally pushes you to use weapons from the beginning. But can you say that it's not insanely no cool? You can shoot Looks lightning. Nice. Ice, beams of fire, balls of fire. You can heal yourself, make enemies attack each other. Using oh, magic for feel like swinging a sword for a bit. Summon a fucking sword then. You can summon goddamn transcendental beings called Dremora Lords to fight in your stead. Or just yeah. an ice golem or something. There's so much shit you can do with magic and all of it is fun. I love hey, conjuration. Hey, we heard you like magic, so we put magic in your magic so you can magic while you magic. Wait, Appropriate what? meme for the time, shut up. Shouts. <laughs> You're the son of a dragon. You can just say some random shit and blow people away. There's a ton of shouts and some of them have multiple words so the power gets stronger. All of these are crazy unique and not a single one is not satisfying to use, be it actually useful in the game or not. Feeling bummed because you just can't summon enough things with magic? Summon a fucking dragon using a shout. The words power yeah. fantasy don't do this shit justice. Okay, I said I wasn't gonna get into specifics and then started getting into specifics. Smithing, enchanting, and alchemy. Not too deep, but they do what they're supposed to. They allow you to smith, enchant, and alchemize. All three cooler than they get credit for, by the way. Lockpicking is lockpicking, pickpocketing is pickpocketing. Both actually yeah, pretty simple. satisfying to do, in my opinion, to the point where I feel like there's something missing when an RPG doesn't let me be a slimy little thief. The skill branches even offer some very cool upgrades, like being able to poison someone by planting poison on them through pickpocketing. Yeah, that's fun. Again, options. Speech upgrades can be very useful, like you get better prices and shit, but the actual speech mechanics and dialogue are lackluster and stealth is awesome you can pretty much become an invisible but overpowered killing machine How long were you stuck on that character creator deciding what race to pick because it felt like it mattered how excited were you to find But there's one thing I don't like in Skyrim and maybe some of you are going to agree with this maybe some disagree have you also noticed especially when you make like a male character how you don't have the option okay maybe the high outfits are like a little younger looking but most of the time like your your character looks pretty middle aged unless you are Khajiit or maybe like a high elf or Argonian right like, there are no younger looks for many of the races, if you're an Imperial or not, or a Dunmer, like a Dark Elf here. Like, there's no way to make your character look like you're in, let's say, your mid-twenties or something. Like, you always look like you're in your forties or even older than that. Like, I, I wish, like, they would have given us, like, actually more face options and maybe to, like, also have, like, certain age or, like, smoother skin or something. Like, I don't know. Like, the thing is, when it comes to like, customization, I feel like we don't have enough. Like, sure, we have, like, a couple of interesting hairstyles that look pretty good. You have, like, different noses and lips you can pick, but that's about it almost. And then you're, like, running out. You don't even have, like, different ear shapes and stuff. Like, what if I want the elf with, like, shorter ears, with, like, longer ears and this and that? 
I don't know. Like, I feel like they could have given us more customization options, honestly. But it is what it is when it comes to customization. But then again, I don't often see my face of my character anyway, because I'm always in first person. So, yeah. Race to pick because it felt like it mattered. How excited were you to find Blackreach, a whole ass underground city adding even more depth to the already masterfully crafted map? How excited were you to come home and rob your wife off her business profits? And what? A cozy little profit. <laughs> this is your share, love. How much time did you spend picking up every little thing you were purposefully allowed to pick up? Reading books, decorating one of your houses, and hoarding cheese wheels in your living room. These are things that create memories. It's These cool. These are things that make Skyrim wide. People say the RPG part of Skyrim has been dumbed down from previous games. Yes, wow. good. Development is not only adding to the previous iteration, it's also trimming the fat, streamlining things that could use it, even though there's always going to be people who prefer it the old way. And I admit, it was probably fun as fuck to literally jump across the whole map in Morrowind using broken acrobatics. What I'm trying to say Wait, in this what? video is that Bethesda achieved the perfect balance in Skyrim between wide and deep simple and complex. It's still very much an RPG, just one that's not overwhelming and inaccessible to casual players. That's sure, true. if you're a big RPG nerd, you'd probably prefer a more complicated skill tree, leveling system, classes, and stats, but even so, I think you can still enjoy a slightly less complex version of all that, whereas someone who's not as big of a nerd as you would feel put off by a bunch of words and numbers to keep track of. Yes, that someone may or may not be me, and I may or may not be <laughs> making this video exclusively to justify my inability to get good. Skyrim is one of my favorite games of all time that I probably wouldn't have even gotten into if it was any more deep than it is. Like I'll probably never get into something like Divinity Original Sin. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've established Skyrim's secret formula that obviously worked, let's talk about why no one else has done it since. First thing that's always a factor when something blows up is timing. Kinda abstract, difficult to define, and impossible. You know it's like strange because he just mentioned timing and there's something that just I just remembered like 2011 was the year that Skyrim came out and I've noticed something interesting. There wasn't just Skyrim that shaped the future of gaming. But there were two other super big games that influenced the future of gaming a lot that came out in the same year in 2011. Now be prepared, guys, because this is actually almost like not spooky, but it's kind of like very mysterious why this happened all in 2011. So what other super big game came out in 2011? It was freaking Minecraft. What else came out? Dark Souls. And if you look at those games... Like, they actually influenced a lot of other games. I, 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 would there be a Valheim, for example, if there wasn't a Minecraft? Like, what what about, like, this kind of cartoonish sort of games with, like, Minecraft, for example? I f I'm wondering sometimes Fortnite, Minecraft, was there, like, some inspiration sometimes? <laughs> because there's also some building going on in Fortnite, right? And if you look at, like, Fortnite, I, I'm pretty sure that the devs, they got those ideas also from, like maybe playing some survival games, perhaps Minecraft, right? And then Fortnite came to be a very big game. If you look at Dark Souls, like, if there wasn't a Dark Souls, there wouldn't be an Elden Ring, for example. Like, that's that's a fact. Like, a lot of those games that came out in 2011, they had such an impact on the future and, like, other products that came out because they were some sort of inspiration. Like, like ESO, for example. There wouldn't be an ESO without a Skyrim, right? That's a fact, <laughs> but seriously, like 2011 was, I think, one of the best years for gaming. So many cool titles came out. First thing that's always a factor when something blows up is timing. Kinda abstract, difficult to define, and impossible to predict. It's a big question whether that exact same game would receive any attention if it came out today, and one that I can't answer because how the fuck shit I know, but it's evident that the world was just ready for that kind of game at that time. 2011 was also a very different time, and even memes lasted longer back then. <laughs> People were making arrow to the knee jokes and fusro da edits for literal years after the game came out. 
I guess there were just fewer things back then, so the focus was on them longer. Whereas nowadays, a low-res silhouette of Saddam Hussein that was popping last week already feels ancient because we now have a low-res drawing of a mushroom. And if thousands of cringy fellow kids brand accounts that didn't even exist back then aren't any indication, because all was memes new. can be quite a good form of marketing and help keep the thing relevant. Of course, we're talking about longevity here, so even though the timing helped with putting the game on a lot of people's radars, it is not the only thing that makes a successful game. The most obvious reason there aren't more studios trying to repeat the Skyrim formula is that it's just too expensive. Forget how technically challenging the game is or how difficult it is to put together on a creative level, you can't even try to do this if you don't have enough money. Skyrim is yeah. a huge game it's a with risk around too, a 90 if it fails. million dollar budget depending on your sources, making it one of the most expensive games ever produced. This just isn't a feasible undertaking for a huge majority of studios. It pretty much eliminates every indie because if you can spare 90 mil for a game you aren't really indie anymore and leaves us with only the very few industry giants who are even capable of producing a game like this. Which is a problem because unfortunately in the current gaming space, indie studios are really the only ones trying anything even slightly innovative and different. It's a big bummer, it sucks, but AAA studios just don't take the same risks anymore. With the gaming industry growing to such an astronomic size, there's just too much to lose for all these big corporate entities to try to experiment. Now if Skyrim has a formula that's guaranteed to work, how is it a risk to try to repeat it? Well, yes, you can put together the things that made the game so successful and call it a very very easy guys um let me let me tell you how you can make a new game like Skyrim. Like let's say an Elder Scrolls 6. So what what made Skyrim so popular? We have to look at it. So the story was fleshed out. There was some depth, but not everything was super depth, right? So it was casual friendly. So if you make like a new game that is like Elder Scrolls, make a game that appeals to those that are more casual, but where you have certain elements that are super in-depth in the game story-wise. Um, make the world feel somehow realistic and very fun to explore. Add something more real life um, based, like we have, what do we have here in Skyrim? We have mountains, we have rivers, we have forests. We have uh, hot springs, we have this and that. So so if a new game comes out that is like Skyrim, it can have some sort of similar atmosphere, maybe like a medieval forest kind of atmosphere, sort of like in Valheim, for example, but maybe with, of course, better graphics. So you flesh out the graphics with modern technologies, create a map that's at least the size and gives the exploration feeling like Skyrim, but with modern technology. Um, you add some randomness to your world, kind of like, can I say like a sandbox game, but where like each playthrough has like a different generation of stuff. Like sometimes there is a mob, sometimes there isn't a mob. Sometimes this quest asks you to go to that cave. Sometimes the same quest asks you to go to another cave. And you can do the whole thing again on like a new game, like a Elder Scrolls 6, right? And then you look at like elements of the combat and... To be honest, like the comment was a bit too simple in my opinion in Skyrim. So for the new game, you make it a little bit maybe more interesting. So maybe if you do like a heavy attack, you have now some perks where your heavy attack turns into a spinning attack or something if you press the heavy attack uh, button or whatever. So there are definitely ways to make this again. You just stick to the concept, like what is going on in this world, how there's like some randomness, the graphics, the immersion, and you can definitely duplicate this. Like it's not impossible risk to try to repeat it. Well, yes, you can put together the things that made the game so successful and call it a formula, but it's one that's much more difficult to clearly define and reproduce than that of Assassin's Creed, Fortnite, or Call of Duty. It's one based on feeling more so than statistics and numbers. That too. And to have a whole team share the understanding But the feeling is created by the atmosphere in the game. more difficult the more a studio grows. You can put everything that makes Fortnite successful on a bulletin board, have 
have a thousand people read it and come up with Apex Legends or Warzone, but if you do the same with Skyrim, those thousand people will likely all interpret it differently. Everyone has their own idea of what these feelings that Skyrim nails so perfectly actually entail. Bethesda only had around a hundred people working on the Elder Scrolls V, and I think this went in their favor. Not saying a bigger team can't all be on the same page, but it probably requires quite a lot more management. Obviously, I know next to nothing about the internal operations of a studio, so I'm just talking out of my ass here, but the reason I think this is because we've seen it happen time and time again that a studio grows in size and their games become shit. Bethesda ironically being one of the examples. These studios that have been around for a while usually have really cool origin stories where it was just a group of people genuinely passionate about their work that organically grew to a sort of sweet spot where they put out their best games, but then they grow beyond the friends who all know each other working from a humble office on their passion projects phase. People who made the previous games leave, new people come in, those new people can't work well on old foundations, there's investors who only care about their returns, pressure is put on the devs with deadlines, maybe the studio is even acquired by a bigger studio which means yeah. more restrictions, even bigger focus on numbers as opposed to feeling, etc, etc, etc. Also apparently every big studio in existence has a toxic work environment full of harassment, crunch and discrimination, which is I guess what happens when Sadly things become true. corporate and no one but the devs is actually there for their passion towards gaming. Big companies are soulless and this is apparent in their games. If there's literally 15 studios working on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, can every employee put love and passion into their contribution knowing that it's actually a significant one? At that, You know what, what I'm wondering when this actually happens when there are like so many working on one single game in like multiple studios? How do they actually communicate with each other to get the red string to like people to follow it when it comes like story and immersion? Like imagine like you're doing one side quest. Like, how do you connect this one side quest with what's happening in the world or with the main quest? Like, is there some, some connection? Is everything just like random puzzles that you put together to create some sort of random product? Like, there should be some vision that's like shared between all the devs and everyone working on a game. So, so what's the world about? What's the main feeling of the world? What's the main story? What should happen there? Um, is there maybe some sort of connection between like two NPCs that offer you some quest? Like, uh, I, I think this is like the, the biggest issue when it comes like too many people on, on one thing, right? Like everyone has a different view on things, a different immersion as well into the world. Maybe even a different vision. So there's like going to be some clash between those two visions, right? Or like in this case, probably like 20 plus visions. So, ah, uh, yeah, you have to be very careful with that. Like people, that's why people, like when it comes to like developing games, they need to often sit together and share their ideas and also their progress. So you can look at your colleague and see, oh, he's doing this quest in this city. Uh, I'm doing the quest of the, the brother NPC of this one also in this city. And there's some connection between the two and stuff. Like this needs to be really like, talked about and discussed so there's like no kind of puzzle gameplay if i have to call this puzzle gameplay we're doing one thing has nothing to do with the other and the immersion just breaks actually a significant one at that point no matter how much you love games you're nothing more than a replaceable cog in the machine made to pump out formulaic content your unique ideas and input aren't required. Listen, there's big studios putting out amazing games, but for a game to be amazing today, it doesn't need to break the mold. It needs to do what a good book or movie does. Yeah. Have a heart-wrenching, relatable story, memorable characters, and a pretty setting. But games have so much more potential than that. Books and movies are pretty much the same as they always have been. The medium itself doesn't evolve. The author just creates a new thing of that same thing. But gaming adds so many more interactive layers to storytelling. I don't want to see gaming as a medium plateau when I know there's an infinite amount of potential yet to be discovered. True. So many new, bizarre, unique forms of that thing that is a game to be created. As much as some people may not want to give it credit for it, Skyrim broke the mold and pushed the medium forward at least a tiny step. 
We don't know what the next thing will be that hits all the notes that Skyrim did, but we at least know there is one studio working on creating the next Skyrim, and that's Bethesda. Whether it's Starfield, which has been described as Skyrim in space, or the actual Elder Scrolls 6 coming in 2069 probably. Let's just 16. give them the benefit of the doubt I hope, for now. I hope not then, I would be dead by then. They've learned from their previous mistakes. Thank you for watching. I know I said in the beginning that it's okay if you disagree with me, but I've changed my mind. Commenting is forbidden if you disagree with me. I want a total echo chamber in the comments so I can sleep sound tonight. Also, I never ask for this, but share the video somewhere. You don't even have to subscribe or whatever. If you like the video, just do me a favor and share it. Thank you. I'll share it in my description. Now, this was really good. Let me give this one a thumbs up. It was very informative and to also see the views of like others on the game. But yeah, I, I, I feel very nostalgic about Skyrim. Each time I get back to play it, I never feel like really burnt or b like bored or like uh, burnt out after just a couple of hours because I know that each playthrough has something unique about it. And if I play once uh, through the game as a warrior with a big two-handed weapon, the next time I can play as a mage, the next playthrough I can be uh, like sword and spell kind of character, right? Like like a battle mage or something. Like, uh, it offers so many options. And then you have those random encounters, you have those random quests where sometimes you're being sent to a cave, sometimes you're being sent to some Draugr crypt. And it's everything is very very cool about Skyrim. It feels like a sandbox game even though it isn't. And with those many new mods and stuff that are constantly coming out, you're getting like whole new quest lines, you're getting new armor and appearances, you're getting like new housing stuff even with some of those mods. Like it is crazy. Like there's just so much content. I think if you if you include all the mods, you can play Skyrim for eternity and you never run out of content really. Because every couple of months you will find some interesting mod. But yeah, what made Skyrim for you special? What is the most memorable moment in Skyrim for you? For me, for me it was like once I walked somewhere, like random crabs attacked me and a giant freaking uh, punched me to the sky. <laughs> but yeah, and when I joined first the Dark Brotherhood and like that whole thing. Okay, I don't want to spoil it, but something bad happens there and then you have to move to another location and stuff. Like, there's just a lot of good memories that I have with the game. And, it, and, it, and I have, like, insane amount of hours in this. Like, I had, like, my, I have an even, like, funny fact, actually. I have also Skyrim on console and on computer. So, if I if I count, like, all the hours I've spent into Skyrim, it's insane. You know what? Let me actually check on my Steam how much I actually played. Um, how, For how long was I playing Skyrim? Yo, what the heck? I have 2,252 hours. Woo! 2,000 plus hours. That's crazy, right? And wait, that's just on computer. That's not on console. On console, I have probably like the same amount or something. It is insane, guys. Like, seriously, I've played for so long. But yeah. Yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time.